Hello everybody, this is the first video I'm doing on tech-related topics. I want to do these videos every now and then, but I don't get upgrades as much on my computer, so they won't be like every week. But I will try to get some out every now and then as I try and overclock and maybe do a tutorial here and there, I mean, etc. Anyways, today I'm going to be talking about the Enermax Liquimax 3 360 AIO, AIO cooler. So I've read some pretty nasty reviews on their previous cooler involving the horrid Enermax glue, as I've heard people call it. Now they have had problems with corrosion in the previous coolers, so I was skeptical on purchasing this one. However, Enermax did release a statement that said they had fixed the issue and that it was due to the liquid they were using before. So before purchasing this product, However, I could not find a review that was half decent to really see the cooler working and look at its performance. So it was really, I hope it works. And I got it, opened the box, installed it, and I was really impressed. But in this review, I will be going over the performance and aesthetics. So let's get this montage rolling on this beautiful cooler. Okay, so here's some video of Battlefield 5 playing a strategic con conquest map my system has a gtx 1060 6 gigabyte evga it's a blower model it does not have a two fan or a three fan cooler on it i have a fan on the bottom of my case blowing into the gpu fan and then it's sucking the air through the heatsink and exhausting it out the back and that dropped my temps quite a bit on the GPU side. We were running like 76 before, now we're like 62, 63 on an overclock. We're running plus 215 on the core and plus 485 on the memory. I can go a bit higher than that. I think what I was able to get to before it really started getting unstable because of the temperature was 225 on the core and 500 on the memory. I tuned it down a bit to keep it stable. So we are going to look at this video. This is running on 1080p. We have RTX on, on ultra. Most of the settings are on high, so I'm actually really surprised that my card could even handle this at the frames it's running. Um, before, I don't know if it was Battlefield just not being optimized well or not, I would get like 30 frames, but now it's like double that. I don't know what they did. Um, at some times when there's quite a bit of light or when it's got to process something really, really, really quick, that it has needs lighting data for the ray tracing it'll it'll drop the frames for a second but it just speeds right back up and it's fine for me at the moment obviously an rtx card which is native for ray tracing would be so much more better at it but it works very well and as you can see the cpu doesn't get above 55 degrees i don't even think it's reached it it stays 51 53 i mean pretty much there at all times. Um, we're running an i5 8400 at 3800 megahertz. It's not overclocked right now. I took it off. So we're running stock clocks at 54 degrees Celsius and around the 80 90 percent usage margin. Um, I mean, overall, this cooler is really, really well. It's performing great, actually, better than I thought. I thought maybe it was going to be more in, like, the 60s. Before, we had the stock Intel cooler, which, on a stress test, by the way, would get me to about 98 degrees Celsius. And that is when I decided I needed a new cooler because 98 degrees Celsius is not acceptable. I installed the cooler, 
we use a uh, Corsair XTM 50 thermal paste. I obviously could have gotten something better, like Thermal Grizzly Chironite or Conduct Knot, but Best Buy was close and I didn't feel like waiting another week or so because of delays on Amazon for thermal paste. So I went ahead and just went to Best Buy and got us some XTM 50. It works really well. Obviously the other paste would probably work better. And installed it. We dropped a pretty much 40 degrees Celsius on the CPU temperature and the CPU Z benchmark, or the stress test more or less, because we can do the bench or the stress. I prefer to do the stress because I can see how hot it gets over like a 15 minute period of just stressing it at a constant. And with the stock cooler, we were getting 96, 98 degrees Celsius, and I was afraid to let it run even more because it would like very, very, very slowly rise. I didn't let it get to 100. At 99, I was like, all right, we need to shut this down. And put this new cooler on, immediately 54 degrees was the max we got on this stress test. And I was, I mean, it, it like stayed there. It didn't go above, it, it was constant, 54 degrees. Celsius on the stress test. So, overall, right now, this AIO, in my opinion, is really good. It's the only one I've ever had, but to get my processor down 40 degrees, granted, I was using a stock cooler before, but that's still pretty impressive. And 54 degrees is good. It's not custom loop good but it's good considering this AIO was like $80 on Amazon it was on sale so it's more like 90 regular but that's like super low for a 360 millimeter AIO that's like the price of a semi-decent 120 I mean you can't beat that um and I was looking at the reviews and everything when buying this I was very skeptical because I was reading all about the goo and the gunk. Gamer Nexus has video on it. Some other YouTubes have videos on it as well. But I did not see a single video re like with the goo on this cooler. And and I really didn't even see reviews on this cooler as well, which is why I've made this video. So that you can see that Hopefully this company has solved their problems and that the cooler is a good thing for your buck. In around six months, I'm going to take the cooler off and I'm going to look at the condition of it as well as monitor my temps because the symptoms of the bad coolers were that after about six months or so, you would see them gradually lose their efficiency the temperatures would get higher so at six months i'm going to monitor the temperatures record them put them in graphs compare and then after i'm done that i'm going to take the cooler off look to see if there's any corrosion or anything i clean the the processor and the cooler with isopropyl before i pit it on so we sh shouldn't be contaminated or disinfected and everything. Um, when we take it off, we're going to put it back on with, X or no, uh, what is it called? Um, MX4, Arctic MX4. So it should be a couple degrees cooler, but it's not, that's really like a margin. It's not too significant unless you're overclocking and you're fighting for that every degree of stability. I have hit MX4 on my graphics card, and we were hitting 67 degrees previously, now we're hitting 62. So it went down a good 4 degrees, which is good. So, on all, I think this cooler is really well. Currently, at this state, I've only had it for two weeks. I would recommend it at this point. In six months, we'll see if that changes at all. Hopefully not. I don't want to have to clean it out or 
Hopefully there aren't any damages to the processor. Hopefully it doesn't leak either. That wouldn't be good. And then I will be able to make another video, even if it is good. Like if it's still good, I'm still gonna make another video just to check up so that y'all can see that after a six month period, it's still up and running and kicking, if it is. So, that's pretty much all I've got to say about it. I would totally recommend this cooler. It's working perfect right now. The AR ARGB is great. Uh, I have the controller on there and I can go through all these different little modes. And it looks really nice. Uh, it goes well with my other fans as well. When you turn the lights off, it looks really nice. The 360 Rad is pretty pretty cool um, in terms of temperature wise. The aesthetics is, I mean, it looks like a radiator. <laughs> but, um, I mean, that's pretty much all I've got. Do I recommend this cooler? 100% right now. I mean, that's pretty much where I'm at. So, thanks for watching. I hope you have learned something about this cooler. I hope my video was helpful and that you can really get a good idea of how well this cooler works, whether or not you should buy it. If you're on a budget or if you want to just get an AIO to toy with the water cooling side of PCs, but you don't want to spend a lot of money right now because you're just a little bit unsure about the whole water cooling ideas, I think this one's a good one for you at $90 on Amazon. It's pretty great compared to NCXT's or the EVGA one or the uh, Corsair ones that pretty much are like $300 and up. So it's a good alternative. 100% recommend. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.